everyone. Today, we're going to create a wizard that's super tough to kill and reflects a ton of damage to anyone who attacks you in melee. With this setup, you'll be almost impossible to defeat and you can take down enemies easily by either standing your ground or getting them to attack you, which is a fun way to play. So let's get started. And we're starting as a wizard and later focus on the abjuration subclass to unlock a important spell. At level 1, you get to choose a few cantrips. I suggest going for Ray of Frost, Shocking Grasp, and Bone Chill. In this build, we'll mainly focus on Frost spells because combining these spells with a wet condition is going to double the damage. So we'll take advantage of that to make our wizard incredibly powerful. For spells, a crucial one to take is Metal Missile. This spell is super handy and you'll find it really helpful as we progress. As for the other spells, it's a good idea to focus on utility. Take Long Strider for instance, it boosts a creature's movement speed by 3 meters. And the cool thing is that it's a ritual spell. Ritual spells can be cast outside of combat without expanding a spell slot. So all your party members get a nice 3 meter speed boost for free. Enhanced Lead is another awesome choice. It triples a creature's jumping distance, giving you some great mobility. Feather Fall is worth considering too. It helps you avoid taking damage when jumping down from a really high spot. For the rest of your spells, feel free to choose what you like. This spell only relies on a few specific spells, which I'll get into in a minute. And you also have Arcane Recovery, an ability that lets you restore some of your spell slots when you're outside of combat. When it comes to ability scores, you want to dumb dexterity. Since this spell is all about taking hits and reflecting damage, having high dexterity will increase your armor class, making it harder for enemies to land hits on you. That's not our goal. We want to be an easy target, so we can reflect damage using our armor of Agathis. Setting dexterity to A gives you a minus 1 on your armor class, and it's a great way to make this spell effective. As for the rest of your ability scores, you want 16 for both constitution and intelligence. You might want to put a bit more into string and wisdom. But that's totally up to you. Moving on to level 2, you gotta pick your subclass and make sure you go with the Abjuration subclass. This grants you the Arcane War ability, a shield that blocks damage for you. Here's how it works. Every time you cast an Abjuration spell, the war's intensity increases by the level of your spell. When you take damage, the war absorbs amount of damage equal to its intensity and then decreases by 1 after a long rest. The wall resets to your wizard level, but what it doesn't mention is that you can have a maximum intensity equal to twice your wizard level. And now this may not sound that impressive, but as you level up, you can increase that power to 10, 20, or more. This means that every time you take damage, it gets subtracted by that power, possibly resulting in you taking no damage at all. You can boost the Arcane War's power by casting more abjuration spells. So uh, the priority here is to focus on this type of spells. On level 3, we're switching over to the Warlock to get a crucial spell called Armor of Agathis. When you cast this spell, you gain 5 temporary hit points, and any creature that hits you with a melee attack takes 5 cold damage. What's even better is that when you upcast this spell using higher level spell slots, you gain more temporary hit points, and the reflected damage increases accordingly. For instance, casting this spell with a 6 level spell slot grants you 30 temporary hit points and if a foe hits you, they take 30 cold damage in return and if they're wet, it becomes 60, which is pretty insane. Remember, Armor of Agathis is also an abjuration spell, casting it also boosts the intensity of your arcane war. Moving on to level 4, we're dipping into another class, the Cleric. The reason for this choice is to obtain the Create Water spell, which applies wet condition to folks, doubling the reflection damage from armor of Agathis. This step is, however, optional. If there is another cleric in your party who can cast this spell for you, however, assuming you don't have another cleric, taking one level in this class is beneficial. For the subclass, I recommend the War Domain. It grants you War Priest charges, allowing you to make an additional attack as a bonus action using one charge. You have three charges per long rest. From level 5, we're fully committing to the Wizard class. You get to pick two spells at this level. But unfortunately, there are no abjuration spells available. I recommend going with Misty Step. 
providing some combat mobility and perhaps invisibility for exploration purpose. At Whistle level 4, we get to choose our first feat for this spell. The choice doesn't really matter, but I lean towards alert, giving you some advantage on initiative. Cantrips and spells also don't matter that much, just pick whatever you like. As you hit level 5, you unlock level 3 spells, and counter spell is really awesome for this spell. It not only prevents your folks from casting spells, but also boosts your arcing war intensity every time you use it. Next, we take in Glib of Warning, which is the only abjuration spell with an offensive focus. And you can choose from various glibs, including Frost and Lightning, to pair with the Create Water for double damage. Really awesome. At Wizard level 6, you gain Projected War, allowing you to use one layer of your Arcane War to protect an ally from taking damage. Not a bad one, honestly. But I tend to save those powers for myself. Regarding spells, consider taking Haste, which grants you an extra action and also increases your movement speed, enabling you to cover more ground and provoke more opportunity attacks. At level 7, you want to pick Fire Shield. This spell gives you resistance to cold damage, syncs perfectly with armor of Agathis, and it deals 2d8 damage to any enemy that attacks you in melee. It lasts for 10 turns and requires no concentration. As you reach level 8, you get to choose your second feats. As mentioned earlier, the choice doesn't significantly impact this build. Boosting your intelligence by 2 is a solid option, or you might consider Athlete. Increasing your jumping distance by 50%, and feel free to choose what you like. At level 9, there's nothing particularly special. However, when you hit level 10, things get interesting with improved abjuration. Now, each time you take a short rest, the intensity of your arcane war increases by an amount equal to your wizard level, which is a quick way to replenish your arcane war. Now, let's dive into how this spell operates. After a long rest, you cast Armor of Agathis using the highest spell slot available. This spell stays active until your next long rest or until your temporary hit point runs out. And while you have those temporary hit points, any enemy that hits you with melee attacks takes cold damage. To ensure the Armor of Agathis remains intact, you need to keep your Arcane War intensity as high as possible. When it's at a decent level, you essentially take no damage, but continue to reflect damage to folks who attack you in melee. However, as your war decreases due to incoming damage, that's when you start spamming abjuration spells to maintain the intensity. Spells like Counter Spell or Glib of Warning come in really handy for this purpose. To amplify the string of this spell, consider having a Cleric cast Warding Bomb on your wizard. This spell grants you resistance to all damage and a plus one bonus to your AC and saving throws. Here's the catch. Every time you take damage, the spellcaster also takes the same damage. But here's the trick. If you manage to keep your arcane war at a higher level, you and your cleric end up taking no damage at all. So uh, you kind of get the all damage resistance for free. Now there's some drawbacks for this spell. Ranged enemies pose quite a challenge, easily breaking through your war without facing any consequences. To counter this, your priority should be eliminating archers and spellcasters quickly. Interestingly, when your war is active, folks tend to target other characters instead of you. In terms of combat, it's ideal to pre-buff yourself with haste and fire shield. On your first turn, you can cast create water to get everyone wet, and then just move past as many folks as possible to lure them into attacking you. You can even upcast create water for a wider radius if needed. Once your foes are wet, unleash Glib of Warning to deal massive AoE damage while simultaneously boosting your arcane ward. Another tactic involves getting folks wet by tossing a water bottle at their feet, then using spells like Magic Missile to break it. So stock up on water bottles for this tactic as long as you keep your walls active. You're in good shape. Now let's talk about the gear for this build. Interestingly, it doesn't heavily rely on any specific gear, giving you the flexibility to use whatever you prefer. With one exception, avoid wearing any armor with high AC, as we want to be an easy target. For the helmet, consider the warp headband of intellect. It sets your intelligence to 17, and if you are planning to wield a two-handed weapon, you can reallocate your intelligence scores to strength, 
The flash melt glow is a solid choice. When hit by a melee attack, you do only 4x damage to the attacker. When it comes to armor, I highly recommend using cloth. These tend to have lower AC, making you easier to hit. Just keep in mind, if folks miss attacks on you, you do no damage. For gloves, anything from your inventory works. Just avoid the gloves of dexterity as they increase your armor class, and that's not what we want. Disintegrating Nightwalkers are nice boots, providing free use of Misty Step per short rest, and preventing you from falling prone on a nice surface. The Spell Cross Amulet replenish one of your expanded spell slots, even if it's a level 6 spell slot. Rings can be based on personal preference. Consider the Crusher's Ring for an extra 3 meter movement speed, or the Ring of Free Action, allowing you to ignore difficulty terrain and cannot be paralyzed or restrained. For weapons, I recommend a two-handed weapon. While you don't have the extra attack, War Priest charges allow you to make a few additional attacks per long rest. To further enhance this build, consider utilizing the illicit power. This place a beast shape. You can transform into the beast form, making you exceptionally powerful in melee while maintaining your reflective capability. And that's it for today's build. If you found it helpful, please click like. If you want to see more Boulder Skate free builds, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. As always, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video.